Thanks for sticking with us um, and listening to that video demo of this most recent guitar to come off of my bench. Um, with this specific instrument, the overarching goal was to really bring out the natural beauty in the wood. Um, you can see that the wood itself is highly figured. It's a uh, black and white ebony from Indonesia, um, and it's featured everywhere on the head plates, the fretboard, the bridge, obviously the back and the sides, uh, the rosette, and, and a few other places throughout the guitar, including the back of the neck inlay. And so, um, as the builder, I made a decision to really let the wood take focus and, and, and let the wood speak. Um, so I have included my signature Fibonacci rosette. It's one of the rosettes that I, that I repeat um, as, as often as I can. Um, it is my medium shape, which is a 15 and a half inch, so sitting comfortably between a triple O and a dreadnought. Um, that allows you to have a very comfortable finger style position on this while also if you need to throttle it a little bit um, and give it a little bit of a kick, it'll take that very well. So one of the most important characteristics for me on any instrument um, is its ability to be extremely responsive. That is going to help interface uh, the player with the instrument that much better. Um, on my instrument specifically, on this guitar specifically, here are some of the appointments, um, some of the inner workings of the instrument that really help aid this ultra responsive character. Um, number one, the bracing that I have is able to be tuned at, at multiple different points. Um, the back is also built to be active, so the back is, has an X brace in the lower bout, um, and, and they're tuned together so that as you're strumming, as you're playing, as you're finger picking, whatever you'd like to do with this instrument, um, the, both plates are working together with you, the musician, in order to create everything that you're about. Um, additionally, it does have a sound port here in the side, which is going to um, act as a vent, allowing more air to be able to be pushed out of the sound hole, and it acts as a nice personal monitor for you. Um, another appointment that is uh, newer on my instruments, um, as of last year is an, a slightly elevated fretboard here. So even on models, if you don't like the aesthetic of a cutaway or it's just not what you're looking for, this elevated fretboard is gonna be simpler to get to 
without that cutaway on the body. Uh, here's an example. This is um, un uncarved, unvoiced, so all the braces are, are much bulkier than they'll end up being. Um, but here we have, this is the back, Brazilian rosewood back. We have a couple ladder braces up top here to provide some structural integrity. Um, and then down here we, we have the central X. Um, and this is really going to go a long ways towards helping that back move and respond to what you're inputting onto the top. Um, so on this instrument, as well as all of my other instruments, um, this features a French polish finish, so a hand applied shellac finish. Um, even though it's extremely labor intensive, it is the only finish I'll ever put on my instruments because of how absolutely thin and beautiful it is. You can see a nice, nice shiny warm luster that you get from this as well. But it's incredibly thin and so you're essentially unimpaired as you're playing it um, versus, you know, even a, th a traditionally thinner finish like a nitrocellulose is still going to be considerably thicker than the French polish. Um, so this is what I do on my instruments. This is what I'll do. I, I offer a conversion service if you have a guitar that you wish just opened up a little bit more um, along with a little bit of brace work and French polish that usually solves that problem pretty quickly.